All right, guys, this is what's going on this evening besides trying to eat supper and talk to you guys. We're going to do a little work on the 120. Mm, that's good. So when I had this jill in here, yeah, I was a week ago or two weeks ago and replaced the bucket pin. Nothing like using a fork for a pointer. I realized that dust seal right there in that cylinder had come out, which allows dirt to get back in that packing and stuff. So I uh, figured before it becomes a problem, we'll just replace it. So I don't know why I'm waving a fork at you guys. What's my deal? I'm gonna finish eating supper. Bill's on his way up. He don't have nothing better to do today because I know you guys can't see outside because my windows are always dirty, but it is raining, it is nasty. So. I got the parts. Bill's going to come up. We're going to pedal in the shop here and see if we can repack a cylinder. That sounds like fun. You guys should join us. Well, here, here's my thought. My thought was to put a block of wood in here. Yeah. So it takes the pressure off the pin. Yeah. And then I'm thinking we'd be better off just taking it all the way off so we don't take an oil bath up there. Okay. We I, got that, I got that torque multiplier. Okay. We can put it on that piston. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this this one down here, this one down here, I think you're right. We'd be better off leaving it on there. Yeah, we just, okay, we can do that. I'm just afraid we're gonna end up with a oil bath or somebody's, then we're gonna have oil all over our scaffolding okay. and everything, so. Well, I'll start getting things over here when we get All right, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, well, you want me to have to put a block of wood in there real quick so we can yeah. take that pressure off that yeah, piece? Yeah, what size of block you want there? Four I think one of them, them uh, four by fours would work.
Bill, I would say that plan definitely did not go as planned. Not too good. <laughs> not too good. Oh, you win some, you lose some, I guess. Well, I didn't drink any. That's the good news. Well, but... the dust, dust door, I mean, that takes up the floor. Yeah, if I just knew somebody had a saw mill with some sawdust for oil dry, that'd work good. We gotta get this mess cleaned up. <laughs> All right, we got our normal slick cleaned up. We got our cylinder in position. And uh, I guess we're gonna pull the head off this thing, isn't that the plan? Yep. We get, need to pick this rod up so we can scoot our jack back a little back. Is there always a knot on there? All right. Yeah. You wanna take the hoist and put it on the rod? You got another one of these? Yeah. Yeah, let's put it on the rod. And then well, we can take that one off, can we? Well, I got the thing set now. Oh. All right, so here's our plan. We got the uh, got it up there in the hitch. We got us a fancy homemade wrench, torque multiplier. That's what we'll call that. We're gonna see if Bill and I's combined weights enough to bust this thing loose. All right, I think it's gonna work. Get up here under me. I think we're <laughs> perfect. Look at that. Go loose. Well, that's a little bit more here. It's not quite loose yet. <clears throat> there she goes. Well, enough we'd figure out how to do it. Yeah, what you guys didn't see on camera is we had a heck of a time. We thought we had to get that keeper out of there and we realized that was the end of the rod. And that set screw goes down the end of the rod. I'll show you there when we get it off. But once we got that figured out, I think from here we're on the downhill stretch, Bill. Well, did it blow the dust seal out or was there oil running out of it? Yeah, there was oil running out of it, but I'm pretty sure it's because the dust seal was out of it. See, the dust got dirt going. back up in there? Yeah, the dust seal's all the way down there, down in the rod. Yeah, well, it might have been cause of the leak. If you lock tight it in there, it loses pressure, why? All right. I recorded the first half of putting this cylinder back together and then I realized I still had hydraulic oil on my lens from the disaster we had. Oh, so many lessons learned there. So many things done wrong. Oh, just glad the only thing that uh, got damaged was my phone because it's full of hydraulic oil now. So, anyways, um, I'm going to give you a little explanation of how a cylinder works, I guess. I don't know. If anybody cares or wants to know, here it is. All right, so this is basically a John Deere Type 26 cylinder, and this is the cylinder head. There's a couple different things down there. Look, I even brought parts for show and tell. So the first thing, all the way down the bottom down there, which I know is hard for you guys to see. Let me turn it over. It's right there, is this bugger. And all that is, is a wear ring, and it's made to keep that rod centered up in all the seals. So the next thing on the list is this seal and backing right here. I don't know, not all cylinders have that. There's different explanations of why they're there. One, I think it helps keep oil around this thing. And two, it also helps the pressure spikes from hitting your main seal. This is your main seal or your packing right here, which looks like this right here. Obviously, if anybody ever does this, it's kind of tapered and the tapered part goes towards the pressure. So that's the downside, that goes like this. Uh, it's also got a backing seal in there. Those backers, they're just made it easier to get the main seal in than you put the backer seal in. The, and the backer always goes away from pressure. So then the last thing you got is what everybody sees. This is the dust seal. This is what actually failed on mine. The dust seal sits right there on top of the head like that, see that? 
they come out and it allows dirt to get down into here. And then once dirt gets down into there, things start going wrong. So I put just a little bit of Loctite on that to help keep that in there. So this will slide on the rod first. And then you got what they call this. And this, not all cylinders have this, but this is basically a cushion stop. So the head, go, the head goes on, the cushion stop goes on, and this is what they call the piston. The piston goes on here. Then the nut goes on here, then here's another cushion stop. Basically what these cushion stops are, is they slide back into ports. See how it's got a groove right there? It's got a groove right there. So basically whenever you, uh, I call what they call deadhead the cylinder, you get to the end of the stroke. Uh, on nicer machines, they got these cushion stops and they don't go BAM! They just kind of hit it and then they go Psh! and they stop. So that's what those little boogers are. But uh, then of course the uh, nut and shim goes on there. This has been chewed up. Somebody's been in here before. Basically the shim, uh, you put the shim in there so when the nut's tight, there's a little ball bearing that sits down that hole. So I hope that makes sense to somebody out there. Um, I explain it the best, <laughs> best I know how to have best I know how to do. I can't even talk today. So anyways, I'm gonna get this thing back together so we can get it back on the machine. All right, guys, I got the head all back together. There's your cushion sleeve. Where's the groove on that? Right there, see how it's going towards the front. The one in the back's the opposite. It's going that way. I got the set screw in. I don't know if you can see, I take a punch. Just kind of punch it to make it go there. Got all those on. I did take and clean. This, this right here is the bevel that starts all these. A lot of times it's got a bunch of junk and trash in it, so I kind of cleaned that up a little bit. Then we'll get too carried away with it, but I'll put grease on all these. I'll grease that. We'll slide it back in there. Uh, then you gotta make sure you get the head clocked the right way. It'll bolt on there a couple different ways, so you gotta make sure this port uh, is where it needs to be. I got a little mark right there, so I know which way it, uh, which way it goes. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is you need to look your chrome rod over real good and make sure you don't have any mix or stuff in it because that'll also uh, take a seal out pretty good. Usually like your uh, dipper cylinder back there or like a lift cylinder on the dozer where rocks get to it. Um, they'll have little chips or something in them, but this one here is in pretty good shape. So we're gonna put seals back in it and hope for the best. All right, guys, we got her all back together. I, uh, I did go ahead and torque those. They torqued like 200 foot pounds. And uh, I got my other, I got my dust seals back in. I need to clean my holes up a little bit more. But uh, it's gonna be a little different rigging this time. Hopefully that works better. But we're gonna put this booger in. That's the last thing we got to do. All right, guys, there she is. We got her all back on and tightened down. The only thing I gotta do is, um, I lost my jam nut. I gotta find my jam nut, but get her cleaned up and greased. And I believe she's ready to go back to work. I thought I time lapsed putting that thing back on. I just thought it'd be pretty cool, but apparently I forgot to hit the record button. So sorry, not gonna see that, but hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you on the next one. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you just take a few seconds to hit that thumbs up button. If you like what you've seen, hit the subscribe button. If you wanna make sure the first person to see the next video, tap the bell. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you on the next one.